In yesterday's 40 Facts video, I received a question from one of our longtime subscribers, Daniel Webb. He asked, Could the Gene Stealer cults create a warp presence, kind of like a chaos god? And at first, the answer seemed pretty clear. No. The Gene Stealers and the Tyranids in general, in my mind, are anti-psychic. They don't come from this galaxy, and so it wouldn't make sense that they possess a presence in the warp. The Tyranids actually shroud themselves from the warp, in what everybody knows as the shadow of the warp. But then again, I started thinking, Tyranids have been in the Milky Way galaxy long enough to have absorbed the DNA of almost all of the psychically powerful warrior races, and have even evolved to combat chaos in the form of the Kronos High Fleet, showing that they are aware of the importance of overcoming the psychic barrier present in this galaxy. And then there are the bioforms like the Zoanthrope that were created by the hive mind after harvesting Eldar DNA, which shows that the Tyranids do in fact have psychic powers and are way more psychically effective than what I originally thought. So even by simply scratching at the surface of the Tyranid lore, I can see that my initial answer of no seems wrong. And this question has the potential to pull us down a rabbit hole of Tyranid lore, which is perfect for the month of November, and that's what we're going to talk about today in another episode of 40 Facts About the 40k Universe. If you guys are new to the channel, allow me to introduce myself. I am your host, Gersh1, and this channel is dedicated to posting Warhammer 40k lore videos every single day. For this entire month, I will be covering the Tyranids, so if you guys have any suggestions or questions about the Tyranids, please comment down in the comment section below and if you guys enjoy this type of content spit acid on the like button so that youtube can recommend more 40k lore videos for you and don't forget to share this with your friends on facebook and twitter it really helps out the channel when you do that kind of stuff but with all that said let's get into 40 facts and lore on the tyranids creating a chaos god Chaos Gods have been created on multiple occasions throughout the long history of 40k, the most famous of which is obviously Slaanesh, the Chaos God of Pleasure. His creation, or her creation, came about from the psychically powerful Eldar Empire whose decadence and debauchery coalesced inside of the warp, giving birth to the Prince of Pleasure. And the key catalyst for his existence was a large group of psychically powerful beings in real space whose actions and emotions showed up in the Immaterium. The same happened when the Eldar gave birth to the god of the dead, Inead. It was the high farseer Eldreth Ulthran who awakened the god by using the psychic power of the souls found in the infinity circuits of every craft world in the galaxy to form a god in the Immaterium. This goes to show that when you gather a large number of quality psychers, you can manifest an entity inside of the warp. To put it simply, so now when we look at the Tyranids' potential to manifest the Chaos God, the first obstacle they have to jump over is allowing their psychic presence to show up in the Immaterium. In other words, bring down their Shadow of the Warp and feed their psychic energy into the Warp so that it may coalesce, a task that the hive mind would more than likely perceive as a huge risk, because it strengthens Chaos, let's remember that all psychics somehow feed Chaos, it also allows other factions to track their movements, because now sanctioned psychers are allowed to spot them through the warp. And it gets rid of their best offensive tactic, because a big part of the Tyranid invasions is cutting off communication from system to system, via, obviously, the shadow of the warp. Not to mention that we don't even know if the hive mind has the ability to pull back the shadow of the warp, or if it's ingrained into their biology. But for the sake of the theory, let's say that somehow the Tyranids are able to do so. The next obstacle becomes creating a big enough group of psychers that can then manifest their emotions inside of the warp. And the Tyranids shouldn't have trouble doing this because the hive mind chooses what bioforms to create. So if the goal is to generate a psychically powerful horde, then it simply has to create more zoanthropes, one of the most powerful psychers that even rival the strength of the Eldar. Now let's say that the hive mind can't create that many strong tyranid psychers like the zoanthrope without degrading their power. It's plausible as there are less Eldar to consume than there are humans, and the hive fleet doesn't have enough Eldari DNA to go around. Well in that case, the tyranids can rely on their gene stealer cults. As of now, the cults serve two purposes. The first is to attract the high fleet to the planet rich in biomass, and then the second is to facilitate the invasion process of a planet by interbreeding with the population and creating a Tyranid-friendly force that welcomes the Tyranids. 
Now, what if these gene stealer cults also utilize their hybrids as a horde who psychically imprints in the warp in order to strengthen their chaos god? In other words, use the already psychic presence of these cult members, who are normally humans, orcs, and Eldar, to worship the Tyranid Chaos God, and then strengthen his manifestation as a god in the warp, kind of like what they're doing with the Emperor. It would be a significantly longer process, but if the Gene Stealers began to target the most powerful psychers in the galaxy, like the Eldar and the Nikasar, then they can create cults specifically filled with powerful psychers that cultivate their belief in the Tyranid Chaos God. Which leads me to the next obstacle that the Tyranids would have to face. Whenever a being manifests inside of the warp, the essence of that god is worshipped by his followers before it manifests. So for example, the elder gods like Ennead, Isha, Caleb and Chikane, and even Segra, their worship is what created their presence in the warp. Many of them were old ones that were praised by the ancient Eldar before they became warp entities. I go into detail about this in one of our lore videos on the Eldar gods, so check that out if you're interested. But the key point is that there has to be a doctrine or a core belief in a godlike being before the Tyranids can create this godlike being. To do this, the Gene Stealer cult would have to spread a religion or a belief in a single entity. This is arguably already being done, as most cults throughout the galaxy usually praise or worship the Great Devourer. They see the High Fleet as the god being sent to save their souls from the eternal pain and suffering. But another possibility would be the worship of an individual Tyranid bioform that the Hive Mind continues to create, like Old One-Eye or the Dagon Overlord. So now imagine all of the Gene Stealer cults worshipping one bioform that represents the avatar of the Tyranid God. This being could be a Hive Tyrant or a Swarm Lord, but it could also be a giant dominatrix. As long as the creature takes on a similar name and the cult prays to him and feels like it is the manifestation of the Tyranid entity in the warp made flesh. And the last obstacle that's not even really an obstacle for the Tyranid is sacrificing the soul of all of the psychic beings that worship this Tyranid god so that it may rise up from the depths of the Immaterium. And since the Tyranids have no real concept of individual lives, committing a mass genocide of their cults and their psychers would be no problem. Now we get into the fun part, because we get to theorize about what this Tyranid god would represent. Korn is the god of rage, Nurgle is the god of disease, Zinch is the god of plots and schemes, but the Tyranid god, this god would be the god of consumption or eternal hunger. He is the great devourer. His worshippers pray for the end times where he engulfs the entire galaxy and leaves nothing but empty space. He is the only entity that will be left after the entire universe just goes dark a churning black hole that no one can escape and one that everyone would be sucked up into as he marches through war. And this gives us the answer as to why the Tyranids would even want a Chaos God. Because as of now, the Tyranids can't really do anything with etheric powers. They can't consume demons, they can't live off of the warp energy, but by creating a warp entity, it will be able to consume the very fabric of reality, feeding off of not only real space, but also the warp and the Chaos Gods themselves. This is my vision of a potential Tyranid Chaos God. And now I want to hear from you guys. What do you think a Tyranid Chaos God would be? What would he embody? Uh, saying that it is the Chaos God of Consumption or the Chaos God of Devouring seem, seems pretty straightforward, but there's so many other options, I guess you could say, uh, to create a Tyranid Chaos God. So like a, a Tyranid God, God of like feralness, because the Tyranids are basically primitive, uh, or even like a Chaos God of the Hive Mind. Uh, I would love to hear your guys' ideas, and we can talk about it in the comment section below. Um, moving forward, I will be answering the questions uh, or your guys's comments uh, that same day. So whenever this video is posted, I'm going to be the most active on that day and the day after answering all your guys's comments, uh, maybe even like going back and answering some of some comments from older videos. Um, so no more answering questions uh, in a long format here on these videos. Uh, but if you guys do come up with a really good question that deserves its own video, I'll create a video like this. So hopefully the next uh, question that's down in the comment section below will be the next 40 facts video for November. Uh, again, let's stick to the theme of Tyranids. Let's give Tyranids that spotlight that GW never 
tends to give to, to, to Xeno races. Uh, so let's focus on Tyranid lore and talking about you know, what a Tyranid Chaos God would be down in the comment section below. Now, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, I need your guys' help. Smash the like button or click the like button, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it helps out uh, the channel and it also helps you get more Tyranid lore recommendations on your feed. Uh, subscribing to the channel also helps more videos to come. I'm, I really am planning out on starting my own Gene Steeler cult uh, warband, so that is going to come in the future. Uh, subscribe to the channel for that, and uh, just share with your friends. It really does help out the channel. I appreciate you guys listening, and we'll talk in the comment section. This was Gersh1 with One Mind Syndicate signing out. <laughs>